Some presidential confidants praise him no matter what, but our next guest has sometimes been critical, including on this program. Joining us now from Los Angeles is Anthony Scaramucci, the former White House communications director and author of the new book, Trump, The Blue Collar President. Now, you've told me that you don't like President Trump's uh, constant criticism of the press. You've told him as well. What do you make of liberal critics in the media, pundits, some anchors, who say that Donald Trump's hot rhetoric and enemy of the American people broadsides against the press have helped foster a climate that helped produce uh, the pipe bomb attacks? Okay, well, I think that's obviously unfair. I mean, you can't link madmen or people that have mental illness and say, well, it's because of the president. So you can't hold him accountable for those people. Uh, but if you're asking me, could the president de-escalate a little bit and have his approval ratings go up and be seen a little bit differently? Howie, I absolutely believe that. I think he's got a five to seven point headwind from some of the bellicosity of the rhetoric. And so he may say, well, that's what got me to the presidency. Uh, but I think now is a transcendental moment for him where he could go to another level. And there's no reason why he couldn't be in the mid-50s, given what I see going on in the economy right. and how happy people are uh, with, you know, jobs, wage growth, et cetera. So, now, uh, but, you know, you can't hold him people, accountable for some those people. people. In the press, That's ridiculous. Some people in the press also tying it to the horrible uh, synagogue attack in Pittsburgh yesterday that killed 11 people. So if you think he could help himself politically, by toning down the bellicosity and not, and just for example, you know, he never made any public mention of the fact that CNN and Barack Obama and the Clintons and so forth were targets of these pipe bombs. Why doesn't he do that? Because he believes it helps him politically not to. Well, no, I don't. I don't even think he's that uh, contemplated about it. I think he's biologically designed where when people are smack talking against him, he'll smack talk back two, three, four times, and so. He doesn't like the fact that uh, he feels he's been treated unfairly. The Harvard study says 92 percent of the press treats him negatively. And so when they're coming at him, he'll come at them four or five times. But if he slowed it down one notch and just dialed in some level of, uh, you know, a smoother edge, if you will, it's not saying that he doesn't have to be adversarial, mm -hmm. but sure. the whole warlike thing is just hurting him. So to me, calling President Obama as an example, that sign of graciousness, that would help him with that five to seven percent of the people that really like him, uh, but they're they're a little bit concerned about the uh, the sharpness of the tone, the a little tone, bit yeah. concerned about all of the angry rhetoric. Let me ask you about the president's veracity, a major a topic in the media. Let me just briefly play uh, a clip from MSNBC daytime news anchor Stephanie Rule. Every day the president of the United States lies, and every day the media fact checks him. And if he would like that to stop, he should stop lying. So that's the daily drumbeat. Trump lies, he exaggerates, he creates his own facts. And you've said, sure, he lies, uh, you've told him not to lie, uh, but that journalists and other opponents make a mistake in thinking this is the way to beat him by, uh, on this question. Explain. Yeah, well, I mean, number one, I think, we're, you know, it's a little bit of puffery. It's a little bit of that exaggeration. It's a lot like what my grandfather would say, why let the truth get in the way of a very good story? Mm -hmm. The president has an entertainment streak to his personality, particularly at these rallies. And so he does play to the crowd. Uh, and I think that these hall monitors in the media that are, quote, unquote, fact checking him and have all of this anger are making a, a very big mistake. It's OK to say, OK, he said this, but here's the facts. But to get all upset like that, I think it's not helping them. Right. Uh, if anything, it's galvanized the president's base. So well, sometimes, they don't like when I say in. that. Let me they cut in. me off. So I'm not going to cut you off. I'll okay. give you a chance to answer. Uh, sometimes yeah. I think he just gets yeah. things wrong. And other times, perhaps he doesn't bother or doesn't want to, to, to know what the reality is. But think about what you're saying. You're his friend, his former aide. You wrote a book praising him as the blue-collar president. So you're clearly rooting for him. And you're acknowledging uh, a pretty steady stream of lies by the president of the United States. You said he can lie. He can tell 10,000 lies as far as you're concerned. And yet you're saying it doesn't matter. So are you giving him a giant pass? No, I don't think so. I, I didn't say it didn't matter. I'm, <laughs> I, 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 I think it's fine for the media to hold him accountable. I'm saying something differently. I'm saying you're saying his, his supporters don't people, care. You're saying his supporters do his, not I, care. I'm saying that his supporters have felt a vacuum. I write in my book, Howie, that the middle class and lower middle class, for whatever reason, have never felt an advocate 
in the Oval Office at least for 30 or 40 years. Now, some of my Democratic friends will be mad at me for saying that, but just think about what happened. He hijacked the base of the Democratic Party and moved it over to the ledger of the Republicans. And so how did he do that? He did that because these people um, want jobs, they want higher wages, and they want better things for their children. And so uh, the Democrats focused on a lot of the social issues and the appropriateness of being politically correct and uh, some of the environmental issues. And I'm not even taking issue with any of that, but I'm just explaining that you left a wide open berth for somebody like President Trump to step in there. So he may say some mistruths. He may say things that you don't like. Uh, but guess what? Those people are galvanized around him. They like him and he's going to win re-election. So you'd be so much better off as a Democrat if you said, wow, you know, he did steal our, our, our people. Let's change our product line and speak to those people about policies that could right. work for them him with a different rather kind of than message. fact checking the president of the United States. Now, Mitch, you, that, you, that was you my told point. CNN, you told CNN that Trump is not a nationalist, but if he says he is, that created some controversy because he wants you, the network, the media to be be upset about it. So is some of what he does in this realm simply aimed at sticking it to the press or generating a big press reaction, which then amplifies his message? Okay, so the fact that people don't understand what you just said is absolute fact. I find it ironic. It's almost like laughable. Okay, so, you know, he's clearly not a nationalist. Okay, he can go out tomorrow night and speak somewhere, uh, you know, pick the location on the campaign trail, call himself a nationalist. But the Orwellian definition, the Barbara Tuckman definition, the 200 years of understanding the specter and the rise of nationalism, uh, he's a peacekeeper. He's not a nationalist. And so he can keep saying it if he wants. Mm -hmm. It'll rile up the media. The media will focus on that. And again, they're missing the point on the deliverables to blue collar people, blue collar right. families and the middle class. Last, so last question, because I've got half a minute it, left. In it, your book it, on your... It's a sleight of hand, Howie. Sorry to break in. In your book on your 11 okay. days as communications director, uh, you now say, you told Meet the Press that John Kelly, the chief of staff, has hissy fits and he's hurting the president. Given that Kelly was a guy who kind of ush helped usher you out of the White House, is this a little personal on your part? Yeah, so, I mean, listen, if you want to think it's personal, that's fine. I've been fired before. John wasn't the first person to fire me. I've also had to fire people, so it's not personal. I'm just being observational of what I see going on. And if you think I'm the only person uh, that is a current or former uh, White House staff member that thinks that way, that's fine, too. But I know that's not the case, but that's another reason why I couldn't really survive in Washington, because, you know, I like, I like speaking very plainly and telling people the truth. So. If you think it's personal, I'll let people uh, that are viewing your show evaluate that. But for me, it really wasn't personal. I don't like the way I was fired. I think it's ridiculous to fire a guy like me like that. Uh, given the amount of money I raised, the media advocacy, right. and my support of the president, you didn't have to do it that way. I think Got it's it. ridiculous, and it's a poor reflection on him. All right, well, I like people who speak plainly. That's why I like having you on. Good luck with the book. Anthony Scaramucci, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Al.